Well, this is uh, just a quick vid on the first scratch build uh, based on the flight test H quad Big Geek 2. Number one didn't make it off the ground. Uh, I'll explain why in a minute. Basically, um, when you build this, make sure this is half inch by half inch spruce. They call it popular, I think, in the US. Make sure when you buy it, you run your eye down it and it's not warped. Because if it is warped and you don't realise, you try and get everything straight, it's not going to work. So that's why Big Geek 1 didn't make it and Big Geek 2 did. Um, basically, half inch by half inch spruce. You can't get it in hardware stores, you can get it in model shops. 3mm uh, light ply. Light ply. Uh, didn't use 4mm, I used 3mm because I couldn't find 4mm, didn't have it. Um, other modifications of the flight build quad, they just used the spruce or popular all the way around. I've added another half inch of um, balsa all the way around. Uh, that is to give the ESCs a little bit more room, a little bit more heat dissipation. Holding the back there, and the wires come through the size. Um, also made a battery bay in very commas out of the same what was left over of it stopped the battery getting punctured um, and the reason I put the battery underneath is because you need to leave at least two and a half inches between the or two and a quarter inches between the magnometer which is on the um, APM 2.5 and the uh, compass and any heavy gauge wiring which is all in the main body so I've stood it up on these uh, legs uh, which are genuine articopter parts just got the 20mm uh, nylon standoffs and a couple of plates put a little bit of foam under the screws to help insulate and my old trick of the uh, sticky back velcro um, on the top plate to help insulate any vibration. But by the way, it's this stuff. Found the packet, not advertising it or anything, but it's good stuff. Comes that thick, and you have to cut it and uh, turn it into tape, but it's good stuff. Uh, motor wires, DT750s, um, cheap but very good, very flexible. Um, Props from Float Ship, uh, which are Gem Fan 11 by 4.7. Um, took the motors apart, old the bearings, left them in a cup of sewing machine oil overnight. Makes a hell of a difference. This stuff will do. Found it at a local hardware store. Uh, by the way, the glue I'm using to glue the frame together is this stuff. You can't fuck around with this stuff. You you need to set it and leave it overnight, at least. And when you do, make sure everything's square when you're gluing it together. Put a couple of heavy paint cans on it and just leave it. Go out, have a good weekend, come back, it'll be sorted. It's very strong stuff, very good. Waterproof once it sets, but it takes a long time to set. Uh, other things with these motors on the arms, I've just not drilled but punched out because the spindle tends to poke out a little bit so make a little bit of a uh, I don't know what you call it, a dink or something in the wood so that the motor can spin free um, and you can balance the props with, with tape which is what I've done and also you can balance the motors with electrical tape on a Something like Dupro balance, just just get get them fairly uh, as good as you can. Um, so motor wires, little tip, took me ages. These are threaded shafts, which uh, tend to, if you don't put something that bites into the plastic prop, they will eventually spin loose. I said the, the props forcing it basically up the um, spindle 
Um, so a couple of M4 nylock, um, M4 serrated washers, one or two, go easy because if you tighten them up too much you'll, you'll pull the thread up and you'll pull, the, pull this up. Um, the point of them is to bite into the metal of the shell. Then a nylock nut which you screw down, again be, just do it by feel, get it to bite both the, the motor belt and into the nylock nut. You might need one, you might need two. With these nylock nuts, um, you, if you keep running them up and down a thread, because it's a long thread, you, you'll tend to do them in a little trick. You can boil them in water in a saucepan for three minutes and you'll get most of them most of the grip back but you'll only get away with that two or three times before you have to switch the uh, nuts because you strip all of the nylock out of them um, so we got motor one or two m4 nylock uh, one or two m4 serrated washers then a nylock nut down biting both then a fairly wide washer to Basically, the point of that is to even out any pressure so that the prop sits flat and doesn't tip one way or the other because the M4s don't quite centre, so you want something that centres the prop, keeps it from not dipping one side or the other. Then, on top of that, another M4 serrated washer. You'll see these aren't perfect, but this thing flies great. I mean, it, it really does make a world of difference. Um, it doesn't come loose every flight, you don't have to carry a spanner with you. And then nylock nut on top, tight, another nylock nut on top, tight. Okay, so that's that. Uh, running 30 amp Simon K Afro ESCs. Uh, just put these bits of carbon fibre 3mm on the arms and the point of that is because this is a wooden quad because I had such a problem with the warping before the idea is that they're zip tied to prevent or help warping and also uh, share any vibration across different materials so it, hopefully, I don't know, I'm no scientist but it should help uh, I guess um, another thing, the flight control unit is housed in a, uh, an old, I just farted, an old CD case which is looped underneath with a, a lock velcro strap. Um, easy, it just stops it getting bashed up. Flies. It, I've crashed it without that, and the uh, standoffs are remarkably resilient. But that's just another thing I've done, and I've where they meet the frame. I've put a bit of the foam there just to try and help any vibration, also the wires, where the wires meet the vibration. Um, Jay Brams on RC Groups power, uh, posted a very good way of powering this. This is the Idafly 2.5.2 kit that comes with GPS and telemetry. Um, you have to, uh, you don't get the little box in there with it. You can buy that off eBay for a couple of quid, I've got a few of them. And you have to uh, solder it uh, together, it takes a while, but I'm no solder expert and I did it, so if I did it, you can do it. Uh, Jay Brams and RC Groups post a way of powering this, and what you need to do is take a. Um, I haven't bothered with uh, any power distribution board or anything, I've just used wires and soldered them together and heat shrink and what have you. Take a 5 volt. Um, a, a UBEC, a UBEC, a 5 volt UBEC, Hobby King 5 volt UBEC, don't power anything else off of it, just use it to feed up through a hole in the top of the board to power the uh, input rail of the Ardu flyer board. You only need one power and one ground in. All else can be signal wires only. Um, you can use a, uh, a craft knife to hook out the other cables or you can just cut them off and insulate them up to you. 
a uh, couple of benefits, less wires, less vibration to the board and also less ground loops. Um, so basically you're running a 5 volt, sorry this is the input side, into the input side of the uh, APM 2.5 board. JPM, JP1 is removed um, at all times if you do it this way otherwise you'll cock it and don't do that so don't put JP1 on so you've got 5 volt in on one of the input channels and ground in on the same input channel and you can even use a signal on the same input channel all the others are just signal only apart from the one going back out to the receiver which needs power so that will need one going back out Okay. But it, the rails are connected. As long as you don't connect the two sides of the board, fine. On the output rail, uh, you've just got signal cables. That's all you've got. And obviously, apart from input output, you've got your um, connectors for your GPS and your Mavlink. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Apart from that, uh, another little thing: uh, motor zip tied on. Landing gear zip tied on. Landing gear is uh, cheap as chips. 40 mil pipe brackets come in a pack of four, which is convenient. Um, from home base in the UK, I don't get in the US. I don't know what they are. Uh, work perfectly. Uh, really, really good. Had a hell of a job trying to find something that will work. Tried cutting off PVC pipes. Tried all sorts of fucking things. These work really well with some foam pipe lagging zip tied underneath. You know, if they break, it's not the end of the world, and no, they haven't broken yet. Use thicker zip ties for the landing gear. Use thinner zip ties for the motors. Reason being, the motor comes off, you want the zip tie to break. Leave a little bit of slack to the uh, wires on the motors. Uh, that's about it. Um, running a uh, GoPro mark, fucking nothing. Uh, it was a test. Um, so I'll post some footage and uh, see how it goes. But this thing flies like a dream. The, 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 the stock pids work. The only thing I would say when you're setting um, when you're setting up the controller, which I'm using a nine XR, forward and back would have re reversed on this board. So you need to um, set that in the actual controller you need to reverse the forward and backwards controls and the only other thing I'll post a link if I can find it again is there's a really cool um, video somewhere of basically um, flight mode so that you've got uh, stabilize loiter out hold on one switch then you've got a panic button that overrides everything which is just basically fucking come home now override or go on an auto mission I will try and find that and, and repost it um, hope you enjoy, hope you have fun and I hope this helps someone cheers